Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome back to Bulge Off 23, our adventure to narrow down the top 20 World War II Battle of the Bulge tabletop board games to one champion. We're down to 12 teams now as we're halfway through our Sweet 16 round. In this episode, we'll take a look at the results from the first half of the Sweet 16 round and introduce our next four matchups, the second half of the Sweet 16 round. Sweet 16 matchup number one featured the last Blitzkrieg from Multi-Man Publishing against a Tigers in the Mist from GMT Games. This one, to be honest, didn't really surprise me in the result, although the magnitude of the victory did surprise me. See, last Blitzkrieg picked up 73% of the vote, Tigers in the Mist getting 27%, a convincing and statement win by the last Blitzkrieg as it qualifies for the Elite Eight, our final group of eight games. To be honest, this one, again, didn't really surprise me because as I was putting together the 20 top 20 games, the last Blitzkrieg kept coming up. And if, indeed, if you look at the board game geek ratings for the last Blitzkrieg, it tops out this group. So I thought this was one of the heavyweight contenders coming into this competition. And by any evidence of the performance of its performance in the first matchup here, it does look indeed to be one of the title contenders in this competition. Nothing against Tigers in the Mist, which is a fine game and it's a great game, but it does it's an older game out of print. Last Blitzkrieg is newer and very popular with the Battalion Combat series. Matchup number two in our Sweet 16 round featured a time from Trumpets from GMT Games against Wacht Am Rhein from Decision Games. This was, of course, our monster mash featuring the two games with the largest amount of counters in the competition, both of these games having more than 2,300 counters in their counter set. But the decision goes to a time for Trumpets with a convincing 62% of the vote to Wacht Am Rhein's 38%. This one, to be honest, I was looking at this, I kind of thought it might go this way, although the magnitude surprised me a little bit. I think this says a lot about uh, GMT's presence in the wargaming market. I think Time for Trumpets perhaps being the broaderly known game between the two of these. But a Time for Trumpets with a convincing win. Now, our Elite Eight matchup will feature a Time for Trumpets against the last Blitzkrieg. The last Blitzkrieg coming in with a hefty counter set as well, almost 1,700 counters in that one. So still kind of our monster quadrangle, quadrangle as we edge into the Elite Eight. Matchup number three, the results here surprised me. We have Battle for the, uh, Battles for the Ardennes by Simulations Publications Incorporated, one of our three oldest games in the competition, up against Ardennes 2 from Multi-Man Publishing, the newest released game in the competition, which was released in 2023, just this year. Now, Ardennes 2 brings the standard combat series to the Battle of the Bulge environment, but Battles for the Arden Ardennes, if you recall, just came off a convincing win over Sela in the play-in round to advance to the Sweet 16 round seem to have a ton of support. However, Ardennes 2 gathers 55% of the vote, battles for the Ardennes 45% of the vote, vote a convincing win for Ardennes 2 over battles for the Ardennes. This one surprised me. I thought Ardennes 2's newness might lead it to struggle in the competition, right? Because it, it, it just hasn't been out that long. I thought its player base might be rather narrow and it seemed to have so much support for battles for the Ardennes. It makes me wonder, this, this competition continues to surprise me. It, I, I, again, I guess two out of the four correct in this round. As I kind of look at them, I kind of say, okay, I think this one's gonna win, I think this one's gonna win. This one caught me completely off guard, which makes me wonder, Ardennes 2, how far can it go? Now it advances to the Elite 8, so it's going on to one of our final eight games and certainly a convincing win in taking out a game that has a lot of popular support. Be interesting to watch this one as it goes forward in the competition. Sweet 16 matchup number four also surprised me in its results. Battle of the Bulge 81 from Avalon Hill goes up against World War II Commander Battle of the Bulge from Compass Games designed by John Butterfield. Now Battle of the Bulge of course designed in 1981, World War II Commander designed more recently. I thought, that by, and, and this brings up another interesting part, I'll talk about it a little bit, but Battle of the Bulge, World War II Commander Battle of the Bulge has really strong ratings on Board Game Geek. I thought it would win handily against Battle of the Bulge 81, one of our older competitors in the competition. It was not the case though. Battle for the Bulge 1981 squeaks out a 53% to 47% victory over World War II Battle of the Bulge, World War II Commander Battle of the Bulge, Battle of the Bulge, which won its play-in round against its older counterpart, the 1965 Battle of the Bulge game, now goes on to the Elite Eight. 
This one surprised me. I thought World War II Commander, being a newer game with a great board game geek rating, would walk over Battle of the Bulge 1981 from Avalon Hill. Not the case, however. Battle of the Bulge 1981, one of our oldest competitors in this side of the bracket, it's the oldest competitor left, will go on in the competition and head to the Elite Eight. In the Elite Eight, we'll have Battle of the Bulge 1981 against Ardennes 2. That's coming up in a couple of episodes, not this one here, but that should be an interesting matchup as we go forward. Age against youth once again in the Elite Eight. Very shortly, we'll introduce the other half of our Sweet 16 round. We have four more matchups in this round as we're down to 12 games now. Our mission is to take it down to eight games in this round. Before we go there, I want to take a moment, though, and explore our mailbag once again. Some interesting comments, and I thought I would address a few of them before we go forward. One comment here by Timekeeper. I think people tend to take these kinds of things just a little too seriously. You're not trying to establish definitively what the best games are, just having fun seeing the way the matchups play out. If you shuffle the brackets, it could be very different. Totally agree with this. This is not to make some kind of a definitive statement overall. It's just kind of fun to see how this plays out and just to explore some of the thinking behind the votes, read some of the comments, hear people things, and perhaps give people, also give people ideas on Battle of the Bulge games that they might be interested in checking out. Because I imagine for most people, and that's kind of a theme within the comments too. It's like, I've only played two, three, one, four, five, six, or whatever of these games. I think there's a ton of games to explore in this field, and it is the time of the year for Battle of the Bulge. So totally agree with what Timekeeper is saying here. This really isn't to make a definitive statement. And again, to go back to what I said earlier in the competition, all of these games are really good, right? These are, I kind of narrowed it down to one thing. These are all playable, fun, executable games that you can get a lot of joy from. We're just having some fun exploring in this format, which one might come out on top in a bracket type competition. The next comment that I wanted to address comes from Parkera NZ, who says, I really am enjoying these bulge offs, great concept. And I wonder if you could do more like this with other games, like sub games, et cetera. Absolutely. That's been kind of a theme within some of the contents on, on the, the episode so far. People saying, oh, could you do this with this? Could you do this with I, that? I have a notebook that's got lots of ideas for this, not just by battle, but, but by genre, by type, by game size, all kinds of things. And I think it doesn't have to be a field of 20, narrowing it down to 16 and then so forth. It could start out with four or even two and just compare the games. Maybe go deeper and show a playthrough on the games to help people see the games better. With 20 games, of course, that's hard to do in a short time span. But I think there's a lot of potential to do things like this, like Park Air says, sub games you know i mean the, the the categories are almost limitless and the way you could do it i think has a lot of variety we could add to it as well so yes if this proves to be interesting to people and people find value of it going forward i can see doing more of these and again the goal here is to kind of what talking go back to what timekeepers comment to have some fun with this but also to help people find games that might resonate with them. I think one of the fascinating things about this Battle of the Bulge competition is that we've got 20 games and there's such a great variety in the way designers have expressed this game. I mean, some games have 2,300 pieces to do the Battle of the Bulge. Other games have 100 and a small map. You know, the, the scenarios, the types, the mechanics, the types of ways designers have approached this is as fascinating to me as the competition itself. And I think that kind of helps people to see, oh, this game takes it this way. Well, I don't really want a small game. I want a monster game. I'm going to look at these. So hopefully maybe help people find games that might resonate with them with the Battle of the Bulge genre. But yes, absolutely. To go back to Park Harris standpoint, I'm looking forward to doing more of these should this one prove uh, interesting going forward. Side note too, if you haven't checked out Parkera NZ's channel, he is doing a series now on Crusader Kings 3, and he has a Medieval Dynasty series up. He's been a longtime creator on YouTube, a wonderful person. I encourage you to go check out his channel and uh, view some of his stuff and, and see if you like it as well. I'll put a link down below. Last comment to explore from Genghis Vern, who says, your audience seems to differ from Board Game Geek. This is a lot of fun. I couldn't agree more. Well, well it's a lot. Of, it, I hope people are enjoying it. This is really fun for me to do. And I really like watching the results come in because, again, I'm I think I'm three for eight on the eight matches and which ones I predicted would win. I've been wrong five out of the eight times. So this is really fun for me to watch when everybody votes and to see what games they're picking, to read people's comments about the games they like or don't like, wondering what's there and what's not there and stuff like that. So I'm having a ton of fun watching this. I hope it's enjoyable for people doing this. But that is a theme that I, I part of the way I seeded these games in terms of the is 
roughly using the board game geek ratings. And I've heard that you want to take the board game geek ratings kind of tongue in cheek when they apply to war games. But one of the things that stood out to me is that the newer rate, the newer games on board game geek are rated significantly higher than the older games in the Battle of the Bulge category here on board game geek. So I seeded some of the older games lower and they're proving actually to be quite strong competitors, which really kind of flips that board game geek rating idea on its head and makes me just wonder a lot of things about how I'm using board game geeks to uh, board game geek ratings to kind of think about what games I want to get. So this has been interesting for me from a ton of angles. I'm not sure there's anything definitive to be said about it. Again, going back to our first comment, but it is a lot of fun. And yes, there is quite a bit of disagreement between board game geek ratings and the ratings we're seeing in these matchups, which is just makes it all the more fun and surprising for me to watch. And now we turn towards the future as we introduce our four matchups on the right side of the Sweet 16 bracket. This will take us from 12 games down to eight games. I think we have some fascinating matchups here. I'm very curious to see how these work out. Let's get started talking through them. Our first matchup in this episode is actually matchup number five in the Sweet 16 round. Once again, we have a very intriguing matchup. I'm not sure, I'm very curious to see which way this one goes. The Ardennes Offensive from 1973 from Simulations Publications Incorporated up against Enemy Action Ardennes 2015 game from Compass Games designed by John Butterfield. Youth versus age, we've got a two player versus solitaire experience, a surprising winner in the first round, perhaps a play in match candidate up against one of our kind of heavyweight pre-tournament pre perhaps favorites. Which way will this one go? We talked about the enemy, I uh, talked about Ardennes Offensive a little before in the previous round. Mark Herman called this his favorite bulge game. This is a mid-level game, right? It's got 250 counters, a 22 and a half, a 22 inch by 27 and a half inch map. Comes from 1973, so it's our second oldest game still alive in the competition. One of these SPI games with the, the counter tray built right into the bottom of the box. So a classic in Battle of the Bulge Wargaming going up against one of the most innovative games in wargaming, perhaps, Enemy Action Ardennes. Now, if you're not familiar with this one's John Butterfield design, it's his second game in the competition. World War II Commander Battle of the Bulge just got knocked out on the other side of the Sweet 16 round. How will this game of his do? This one, of course, is known for its solo mode. It's really three games in one, right? So you've got the two-player, full two-player game that you can play with Axis against allies fighting out the Battle of the Bulge. But more uniquely, this game has its artificial intelligence system that's al that allows you to play the Axis forces against the allies, playing as the Axis, or play as the allies against the Axis forces, a deep and intricate artificial intelligence to control your opposing side, offering up what many people have called one of the premier solo experiences in wargaming. What a competition we've got. Classic Age, Mark Herman's endorsement against enemy action Ardennes, which has a magnificent solo system. I can hardly guess which way this one is gonna go. Let, let us know which one you prefer. The link again to the voting will be on the community page. It'll be down in the description so you can get there that way, um, as well as the first and pinned comment. So go vote for which one of these two games you prefer. Matchup number six in our Sweet 16 round is another intriguing matchup. 1944 Battle of the Bulge from Worthington Games, published in 2020, up against Iron Tide from Pacific Rim Publishing, published in 2002. Both of these games fall into a similar category in a sense to me, although there are, I think, different expressions of that. Iron Tide from Pacific Rim Publishing is a game that I knew nothing about. I had not heard about this game at all before I started kind of doing the research for this series. But it came up time and time again as people mentioning, you should look at this one, you should look at this one. People really like this one. So there is a following for Iron Tide out there. 700 counters, a relatively large map set, but only a 12 page rule book. So again, kind of falling, I think, in that accessible mid range game, but certainly on the larger side when you're talking a relatively large map with 700 counters. But a number of people praising this one as I was looking at putting together the field. I'm very curious to see how Iron Tide does. Look at its opposition, 1944 Battle of the Bulge from Worthington Games with its see-through numbers. That's just the green screen acting up. Uh, a lot of people have mentioned this one. I would probably put this in a category of, especially with the more recent games, one of the more accessible bulge games that I've heard out there. It's very easy to table with a small footprint, very playable rules, fast playing. It's kind of one of those single sitting bulge games that has a lot of attractiveness and a lot of people have mentioned this one coming in. So as I was putting together the field, I heard a lot of voices both mentioning for both these games, 1944, Battle of the Bulge and Iron Tide. 
Which one do you prefer? Go vote for it in the community page and we'll see which one advances on to the Elite Eight. Matchup number seven feels to me like a, another one of these toss-ups. Like I look at it, I say, I could see it going either way. I have no idea. We've got the Bitter Woods from Compass Games, the Deluxe Edition designed in 2014, up against the Deadly Woods, Ted Racer's Revolution Games game designed in 2021. Now the Deadly Woods feels to me like another one of this takes a Ted Racer's Deadly and Dark series to the Battle of the Bulge. Chit pull system, very accessible game with a, a, a modest rule set playing on one map, about 200 and something counters in the game, very playable, and again, published with Revolution Games, high quality and attention to detail. Ted Racer, of course, being an esteemed designer of a number of very popular war games. This is his Battle of the Bulge entrance. Up against Bitter Woods Deluxe Edition from 2014 Compass Games. This is a re-envisioning of the 1998 game by Randy Heller. This is Randy Heller and Bruno Sinigaglio we have worked on this one together. A larger footprint game with more scenarios and a longer campaign game. So a little bigger image of the Battle of the Bulge, but certainly going back in one of kind of the iconic series in the Battle of the Bulge game. So which will it be, the Deadly Woods or the Bitter Woods Deluxe Edition? Go vote for your preference on the community page. I'm very curious to see which way this one will go. And now for our last matchup in the Sweet 16 round, we have The Last Gamble, published in 2009 from DDH Games, up against Ardennes 44 from 2018, published by GMT Games. Now, The Last Gamble defeated Winter Thunder in the original play-in round to make it to the Sweet 16. Small footprint game, envelope game, just about 100 counters to cover the entire Battle of the Bulge. This was one that came up in a number of people's mentions as they were kind of, as I was assembling the field here. And it did very well against Winter Thunder to advance to this round. Up against Mark Simonich and his apostrophe XX, so the hashtag Ardennes 44 series with its zone of control bonds. Larger footprint, bigger map, more counters and GMT's boxed game version of this one. So this one, certainly one of the interesting and perhaps stronger front runners if we're looking at the competition, going up against the last gamble, which had a very convincing win in the first round. You'll vote for which one of these two you think should advance on to the next round. And that brings us to the end of this episode in Bulge Off 23. We'll be back with our Elite Eight round in about six days, probably 5th or 6th of January. As I'm creating this right now, it is early in the afternoon on New Year's Eve. So happy New Year to everybody. Wish everybody a happy 2024 as we head off into the new year. Go vote down below in the community page. I look forward to seeing the outcomes for this one. Exciting to see where this goes. It's been completely unpredictable to me so far, so I'm expecting no less in this round.